Hi, welcome to my channel. I am Tammy Osterk, the designer of badbobbin.com. Today we are going to make, or I'm going to show you how to make the mom photo box 5x7 sign. And there's also a dad one as well. And I'll teach you how to make this and uh, put the little vinyl pieces and the whole ordeal. The, the pictures come in and out. And we'll teach you how to make this and how to add the backing adding the hanger part any way you want to hang it. So this is the Mom Photo Box 5x7 sign by Bad Bobbin. And it'll come with the Mom, and then there will also be for Father's Day the Dad one. And the concept of this will be the same for all my little signs, like you'll see here, and I'll show this during um, the time where we uh, go to the cutting table and see what we do need. But there's also other signs as well, like these that will be made. And the concept is all exactly the same. Once you lay the pieces down, do your embroidery part and adding the back piece and everything. So welcome and remember to give me a like, thumbs up if you enjoyed my video at the end or even halfway through. Give me that thumbs up and enjoy it. Any comments down below and remember to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll get more notifications. And here we go. Let's go to the cutting table and see what we need to make this really cute mom photo box sign 5x7 by badbobbin.com all right we're at the cutting table and these are the things we're going to need to make our um, mom little photo frame uh, 5x7 sign and um, i happen to print out my uh, paper from my program um, i will include a jpeg of this printed out with the um, stitch amount and the size and all that so that you can print out on your own. This happens to be from my program palette. So I write my instructions or I write little notes or anything. So I'm writing my directions. I'm sorry, I'm writing my measurements that I need of the materials. This can be made with felt. It can be made with vinyl. It can be made with fabric. If we're doing the uh, satin stitch around it, you can make it with any of those three materials if you'd like. I like to use felt, less expensive, kind of has a cute little look. And this one, um, all the signs that I do, the, my 5x7 signs, are pretty much made the same way. Um, I even have the Blessed Mother one. This I happen to print out. So they're all pretty much going to be the same steps. The only difference of the steps is when we're going to add our little windows. But the rest of the sewing and then adding the back and front and all that's going to be the same. Uh, so I have a felt that I'm using. And because it's thin and kind of real pliable and everything, I decided I'm going to put something inside to stiffen it up a little bit. You can use a stiffer stabilizer if you'd like. There's also stiff uh, felt and you can use that. But I'm going to put an insert and you can use many different things. So I'm actually going to show you a few of the things and how it's, how it's done. So a thin piece of cardboard. There's even the other thinner pieces that go, that come on your, um, you know, pads of paper and there's that thin cardboard at the back. Keep those, you can use those to put in it. Um, it's gonna be six and a half by the four and a half. And then you're gonna clip the corner. So it all depends on which way the sign goes. So like this one, the sign goes sideways. So you're gonna clip the corners off of it at the top. Um, since this one's up and down, I haven't, that's why I don't have clipped corners on any of these yet. This one goes up and down. So I would end up clipping the top corners. So um, there's many things, like I said, you can use the, the thin cardboard. This is called uh, plastic canvas, I'm lost for words for a minute, old time use, I think it's still, I'm pretty sure it's still out there, it's a thing for needlepoint, uh, embroidery, threads can be used on it and stuff, so this is called plastic canvas, <laughs> and it can be used, and then we'll just cut the corners, and it's pretty pliable, kind of, I think it's um, inexpensive. I haven't priced it lately. I just happen to have a lot and it comes in a big sheet like this so you you know I cut my piece that I needed. Um, I happen to save the cardboard from my labels and I cut a piece off of it and folded it in half and this just it's just kind of perfect a little short but it's not too bad it'll fit in there and I just got to cut the corners a little bit so it's only about a quarter inch short from what I got out of it so this can be used doubled up uh, you can use um, cardstock, put a couple pieces or one piece and fold it in half to give it a little bit of stiffness. So there's cardstock, your leftover cardboard or your paper from this. 
cardboard itself inserts in boxes and I know um, Amazon now is actually getting thinner on some of their boxes. So these are things you can use inside to stiffen it and I'll show you when and where that gets applied. Um, then we need stuff for our hanger part. So many things can be used. There's, you know, this is a, a nylon cord. I happened to find this kind of little fancy cord a long time ago. Great bargain. I don't know if this was from pick and save, not pick and save anymore. Uh, Big Lots, I think this might be from, I'm not sure, or it could have been from Joann's. And it's slightly got, it's got a little tiny wire, barely, I mean, not not really, but it's it can hold up. So this is another kind of cord that can be used. It's kind of cute, it's got a little silver through it. Or your plain old ribbon, you know, your little satin ribbon. Um, this works as well. So I'm probably going to use this little, the satin ribbon um, today for it, since it's being done in purple. Our hole cutter. You can use this, or you can try to use your little scissors to get in there, but most people nowadays are having hole punches. They're learning that our projects all need holes. So I'm going to use um, one of these. I think I'll try the, the plastic canvas this time. So on this plastic canvas, before we get started, when you're measuring it, you're going to measure um, the 5 eighths. I actually wrote it down on, on this paper here. 5 eighths each way. So you're going to measure 5 eighths on this corner and 5 eighths to this corner and you're going to cut straight across. That's kind of how it, very simple. Uh, my ruler. So if I do um, measure 5 eighths to that corner and 5 eighths to this corner. So I know it's going to go from there to that uh, corner. So I'm just going to run this this way. I'm going to cut that corner off. And uh, with the rotary, I can do it with the rotary. So very simple to cut it off. We'll do that to the next side as well. And you can go a little bit bigger. It doesn't matter. You just want to make sure you don't have anything hitting inside that hole where the um, little satin stitch grommet is going to stitch. So like in our directions here, we have this little grommet that's going to stitch. So you just want to make sure that um, it's right in there and it's not going to sew into here. And you want to make sure it's inside your edges. So that's why I told you the four and a half by six and a half. So we're actually pretty, pretty perfect right inside there. And then I'll show you how to attach that inside many different ways of attaching as well. Um, once we get over to the machine. So I have my also for this to do our little frames. I have three pieces of clear vinyl and these measure two and a half by two and a quarter. And you'll figure it out once you get onto the machine, which side is which, and you're going to lay it right at the top of your, so your stitching that'll be there as your guideline. So that actually it's going to turn out pretty cute. And we'll put little pictures in it. And we're having a tearaway stabilizer. And I showed in one of my other videos the difference of the stabilizers that I use. I don't use that really thick um, paper one that's uh, white, really white. This one's a little more translucent, almost see-through, but it is very, it's, it's pretty um, stiff, even though it looks like it may be thin. And this tear is really good. This tear is a lot better than that other one that's almost like a thick paper. So I like to use this one better. I use them both, but this is the one I prefer on most of my tearaway projects, uh, especially if you have a satin edge and then you don't want anything hanging out. So. We are off to the machine to start sewing our mom photo box 5x7 sign. See at the sewing machine. Okay, we're here at the machine. We have our pattern and we have our pieces, our clear pieces. This will come towards the end when we put on our back piece. So these two are at the end. So we have our front vinyl or uh, felt piece. And I'm going to use, for this one, I'm going to use um, pink. I mean, I'll, I'll use white for the outline and stuff so you can, so can kind of see it. And I'm using pink for the mom, and then I'm going to use um, a purple for the frames, and we're going to do the, this. So there are two sides to the felt. I forgot to explain that to you. Um, there's like a flat, more like flat, tight weave side, and then there's more of a fel, uh, uh, fuzzy side. Up to you, you can use either side if you want. One side, which, which I said is more of a um, flat, I want to say stiff, but not really. I mean, it's not fuzzy. It's just all tight together. And then there's also the fuzzy side. So I think I'm going to use the fuzzy side up. So 
So I'm going to actually um, tack this down with some tacky spray. This is what I use. I use tacky spray by Aline's. It's repositionable and it doesn't gum up the needles, doesn't gum up anything. It doesn't harm the machine. I've been using it for 15 years now. Never had a problem yet. Not going to have a problem either. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna put a little bit of this spray on the back and then come and tack it on. But our first thing we're going to run will be our um, placement stitch. All right, we've run our placement stitch there. We did it in white. And I have tacky spray on the back side, and I'm going to center this in my hoop. Start from the in middle and go ahead and lay it, um, spread it outwards. You can tape it down too. If you don't use the tacky spray, you can use tape. You just want to make sure it's down and secured. There we go, not going anywhere. There's the back side, we're all even. And the next thing is going to be um, the tack down of our, um, I can't even think, sorry. It's gonna be the tack down for our felt. And then after that, it's going to be um, our mom letters. And then after the mom letters, we'll start doing our pockets. Alrighty, so took a little time here. I did push the limit on the satin stitch 
um, of the names. So I wanted to be as big as I could and I didn't do the fill stitch. I kept it with the satin and it really pushed our limit of five millimeters, but um, it's okay. It's worked out pretty good. It's there and um, you just got to keep an eye on it, but it worked and uh, we'll, we'll probably do a little, little heating at the ends on the, the M's if we need to. So our next step now is it did our placements um, for our little um, vinyl pieces. So I have two, I mean, we're gonna do three, but it's, it's doing the top and the bottom first because we're gonna need to cut the edges before we go on to the next one on the sides. So um, across the very top, there's no line, but we're gonna set our piece to go right at, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there we go, a little bit like that. So we're gonna go right at the top of that stitch and that's where we wanna place it and center it right there. And I'm gonna use tape for this. And it is going to um, do a stitch around to tack this down before it does its satin stitch. So there's nothing going across the top. So you have no problems on the top. one more little piece. So I put the two pieces on the top. I've lined them right up on the top of the stitch line and then I'm going to add a little bit to the bottom. And I don't want to go over the stitch line. That's why we've measured the amount that we did so that we have enough room for tape and not have to stitch over it and try to pick tape out of our stitching. <laughs> so all right we're ready and the next thing is going to be the tack down and then we're going to pull it back out of the machine again and trim. Remove the tape. We don't want to leave the tape on there for too long. And we want to be careful tearing the tape off of felt and off of the threads that we don't pull any threads or anything. So we want to hold on to that. I know because our our loops are a little little big for our letters, but I just I just kind of like that look and I thought, well, it's just a small enough letters that we can get away with the satin stitch on these letter uh, letters. And then especially if you're doing felt, pulling tape up will end up pulling the fuzzy up. So we want to kind of be gentle on that as well. There we go. And we got one more down here. And not to worry about the bottom there. All right. Now we need our little handy dandy. These are, I'm gonna use my little curved embroidery. We don't have to worry about the top because we line the top up perfectly. When we cut our pieces, we cut a straight edge at the top. So we're just gonna cut around close to, without going through the stitches. We wanna cut that clear off of there. little pieces. So I've cut everything really close to our stitching. There we go. And I'm going to tack that down. I'm just going to take a little lighter to it really quick. And it kind of it kind of pulls the threads in a little bit and has them tacked down. So and that one kind of pulled up a little bit. There we go. That's all. A little tiny bit kind of heat shrinks it a little bit. So our next thing will be the satin stitch around our little frame boxes. We pop it back in. There we go.
right. So it did our satin stitch around the two frames. We have one more to go. And we're gonna go ahead and add our next piece on it. And now you can see why, because it hangs over and it would have caught. So we'll line it up right at the top. Same thing, we're gonna put a little big piece of tape. We'll do our tack down stitch. All right, we're going to remove our tape and trim around to the stitch line. Oh, it moved on me. So you want to make sure you do tape it down good. It actually moved, so I'm going to try to trim this a little bit, but hopefully it uh, I can get it to go straight looking. Kind of, sort of. But that's why I want to make sure we got it lined and taped straight. So my, my uh, line here, you can see I had to cut it because it actually shifted on me. So it's not exactly straight, but we're close to it. So um, go. we're going to do our um, satin stitch around this uh, photo frame. All right, so we finished the beginning, or the uh, front side, sorry, and uh, we've got our little frames and plastic, so we need to kind of uh, singe a few of the threads on the back, and we're going to add our stiffened piece and our back piece. We'll be using the lighter to get some of our um, loose ends here done so that they don't fray or loosen up on us. Same thing like where our M was starting to, so we want to make sure we kind of singe that a little bit. And that kind of puts a knot on the back side so it won't um, fray on the front side for you. All right. So the stiff piece that I'm going to use on this will be this um, plastic canvas. And I want to make sure that I'm going to put it on the proper way. So this is up and down, and I'm going to put it where the pieces are cut out at the top for our holes. And this can be attached different ways. I'm going to try a little bit of this um, tacky spray on it to keep it down. And then, or you can tape it. It's up to you. And then we're going to use, again, the tacky spray on our felt and lay that right on top. I'm going to place it so I make sure that I'm not running to the edges because I'm going to do the satin stitch and I don't want the uh, stitching to hit the plastic. So the spray actually helped. It did stick. See? So it actually does help and, and stick on there. And then I'm going to add my uh, felt piece on the next on the back as well and center it. And kind of smooth it down a little bit, smooth my creases out. Felt is a little forgiving. And go around, and then I'm going to flip it over so it's tacked on. And then I'm going to press down firmly to make sure that it's really tacked in and firm. All right. 
We'll go ahead and put it back on the machine again the right way. And it'll do a tack down of the front or the back piece. And then I'm going to pull it back out and we'll trim. Okay, so it tacked down the back part. So we're going to go ahead and trim. I'm going to cut the back first. So carefully get that lifted up a little bit from the tacky spray. And I'm going to get as close, as close, close, close to the uh, stitch line as possible. Okay, so I've trimmed the back really nice, really, really close. I trimmed the front really, really close. If you have any spots that you need to go over and maybe trim or get closer, go ahead and do that. And we will pop it back in the machine. Make sure we have it in the proper way. And it's going to do a satin stitch. Um, it's going to do our little eyelets first, and then it'll do the satin stitch all the way around. Trim that just a little bit. And you got to be careful on felt that you don't hold the lighter too, too long on it because it will um, melt the felt. All right, and now we're in. We're going to do our little grommets on the top, uh, which we're sewing. Sorry, I'm going to tighten the machine. And then we're going to do the satin stitch all around. And that will be um, for the total stitching time of this is 28 minutes even with the long stitching that we have for our letters. And uh, it's just the preparation time that takes a little bit longer, but we are here and here we go. We have uh, about five, six minutes left of stitching. All right, we are done. Did our satin stitch all the way around. The back side looks good too. We always check the back, everything before we take it out of the hoop. So we look good, holding it sideways. Sorry, we'll see at the cutting table. And everything seemed to stitch out pretty well. Um, from this video moving forward, I may end up changing the letters or having them denser. We'll see what happens or maybe just shrinking them a little bit so that they're going to hold but this is the concept of how you do it. So just in case, I'll put a little note at the bottom whether I change the uh, format for the mom. I may just end up shrinking the letters a little bit for you. So let's go to the cutting table and finish it off. All right, we're finished in the machine and now we're going to um, pop it out. It's pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna pull it out and get the stabilizer off of it 
and then I'm going to go around the edges and uh, singe it a little bit with the lighter. Alrighty, well you saw what happened there. Um, I should have trimmed that little thread, I didn't. And what happened was, because I didn't trim the thread, it actually caught and kept going. If they're small trim threads, then they just kind of singe up and they don't do what that just did. So it can do that. So it's got a little burn mark now, but it's only my sample. At least that's not too bad. And then I've got a, a thread starting to hang off. So I'm gonna, Trim one more and singe just a tiny bit, and there we go, and press it down. All right, so we've got that, and you can see the difference between this stabilizer, and it came out so easy and nice, and I didn't have a bunch of that furry stuff from that, like the other stabilizer. So, and it's a little, it's a little stiff, um, because we added that little um, canvas, plastic canvas in there, so it's got some stability to it, so when we do the hanger, it's not gonna bow and bend, and it didn't, um, you can tell that it's, it didn't uh, have anything on the corners, so which is good. It didn't sew through any plastic. Um, I'm going to probably end up modifying the letters a little bit because it kind of seems that they're just not, may not be working out properly. So, but this is the concept of how to do this and how to add the backing and do the sun. There is also going to be a pattern so that if you use a vinyl, or you don't want this satin stitch, it's just gonna be a bean stitch around it. So if you don't want the satin stitch, it'll be a bean stitch and then you'll cut around it. So I'm um, adding that to um, these designs now. So you'll have two options when you make these, all right? So the next thing, now that we've got everything all nice, is we're gonna punch our holes and you can either use, um, you know, depending on what kind of fabric you're using, I've got this leather punch. So this is a leather punch and we're gonna go right in the center and there we go, that's one, and then right in the center of this one. And I've made the holes pretty much exactly for this one punch so that you won't cut any of your threads. So there we go. Um, same thing, I didn't wanna to cut too many, too many things inside my punch, it's not working. So I'm just gonna, a little bit of, little bit of uh, singeing here, and it's felt, so you have gotta be really careful with this as well because the felt will melt. So I just did a tiny little bit just to get if there's any loose little felt pieces or ends. There we go. So we've got our sign and we just need to add um, our hanger to it. So there's different ways of doing the hanger. You're, you can do whatever way you want to do it. If you want to tie one side, have a loop and tie another side. Um, if you want to um, join it together, this is what I'm going to do. So uh, I'm going to start on the one side feed it through and then bring it back around the outside back side. So this hanger is going to be a double hanger where I'm going to tie this in a, in a bow and then when you hang it the bow will be at the top here. So that's one way of doing it or you can tie your bow here on this side and then tie a bow here on this side. That's another way of doing it. Um, so and depending on how long you want your your uh, hanger to be, um, I'm going to do the double bow thing, I mean the single bow, I'm going to do a single bow up at the top, kind of how I do my um, bear sign as well, how I did that one. Um, here we go. So I'm going to make sure those are even, and then I kind of, kind of just guessing at where I kind of want it to, to end up. So I'm going to um, tie my bow. And you can also go to the bow, my perfect bow tying. So since my, my loop on the right side is at the top, see how this loop is, this, this end is going downwards and this one's going upwards. So I'm gonna make my loop. And since the loop is at the top, this, this one here at the bottom, it, it's not gonna go around the top side, it's gonna go around the bottom. So I'm gonna, go around the bottom and then push my loop through. Kind of hard trying to watch video monitor and do this at the same time. Start that over. I kind of lost it. 
table's not high enough for me, sorry. Okay, so my loop is up here at the top. I'm gonna make my loop. This one's at the bottom, so we're gonna go around the bottom. If it was the opposite way, then this part would go over top. So whichever side there, this one's going, that's the way you're gonna make it. So if it was on the top, we'd go over the top. It's at the bottom, we're gonna go around the bottom. So we're gonna go around, push it through, and we're going to grab the loop like that. There we go. So I'm gonna make my loops just a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter. So I kind of hold the center and pull, hold the center and pull, and then I'm gonna pull my loops again to tighten them. And then I want them a little bit smaller. I'm gonna pull again, pull again. And this, this one loop kind of turned a little bit, but I'm gonna really tight. There we go. So when I hang it, it's going to go like this. Oh, this one will come out the bottom actually. So let me cut my, my ends off. And if you want to keep it so it doesn't open, you can always add um, a little bit of fray stop, uh, a little bit of glue in there. There we go. And then this is how it's going to hang. There we go. So there's my bow and it's going to be at the top and this is how it's going to hang on my wall like that. Or if you want it longer, you just let it go and you can hang that way. The bow on the top, you'll maneuver it around. There we go. So that's how we do it with the bow on the top. Or you can put your hanger that way and have your bow hanging here. It's, it's up to you. You can do a bow on one corner and it'll it'll turn the right way here. So yeah, you can do that and just have a bow in one corner. That's another way of doing it. So there's all different options on how you want to do your little tie. And then for the finale part. So in honor of my mom who passed away on November, um, some of you know the story about that and how I took a little um, part time off to full time care for her. Um, she passed away in November of um, 2021. So it's, it's tough, but I'm making it through. And so I decided um, as I was going through a lot of her things, I happened to find this old picture of my mom. I think this might have been a picture for her passport or green card, but I happened to find it. And the pictures can be cut down to two inches by a little less than two inches. So I'm going to put that one in there. Um, I only found two really quick. So, and this was another picture halfway through. Um, probably this, I think, was my birthday about probably five years ago or six years ago. So I found this one of her and I cut it and we'll put that one in. And I don't have a third picture. Most of them were kind of big, so um, her face would be too big. But I'll find another picture to put in there of her. So this is my mom when she was young and came here to California from Canada. And then... Um, just probably about five years ago or so, that was her. And I'll find another one to put in here, her latest one, I'm sure I'll find. But this is how you do the mom or any of the five by seven frame, um, five by seven uh, signs. So depending on which way the sign goes. Um, there will also be, um, for this sign, I also have the dad. Here's a dad one. So it'll be the same thing. And then there's also the Blessed Mother, which have the little chicks, so that's coming out as well. And it's the same, same concept. Once you do that, then you're going to add your back piece, you're going to stitch it, and you're going to cut around. And it'll also come, um, a few of them will come with the option of a bean stitch instead of a satin stitch. So here we are. Thank you for joining me. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And um, any other comments down below would be great. Remember to subscribe, ring the bell, you'll get more notifications when I come out with more videos and um, have some fun with you guys. And if you have any ideas or anything, please pop them down below, let me know. I will see, do my best and see what we can do. So there will most likely be a modification on the letters. Um, like I said, I really pushed the limit on these, but uh, we're, I don't think it turned out too bad. So thanks for joining me. Meet you at the cutting table.